Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Channel. Today we're going to look at part two of the video I put out recently. This is just looking at a total of 52 altcoins. So I'm trying to get through all of them to give you a nice clean slate of where we want to start from when it comes to the data on these charts. Now, the point of the first video and this video is to look at exit strategies, my position on them, and whether I think it might be time to be selling some or getting back into the markets. Overall, I think it's probably at that stage where if you've got big positions and you started early, you might be looking to get some profits, or at least that's my position. For some positions of mine, like the bigger players of Ethereum and Bitcoin, especially my super fund, I'm looking to ride this thing right out, right out to the top and then back over the other end. I'm happy to do that because of the entry points I had. And if you missed that first video, go back and check it out because I go through each of the dot points and discuss uh, particular reasons why I'm doing something, I uh, discuss the terminology that I'm using in this video as well. And so if you find yourself not figuring out what it is, it's in that video. It's quite a long video and I'll, I don't want to make another extremely long video like that for these next 42. However, you know the way my videos are like, but I want to cover the charts, nice brief format, quick fire across another 40 or so cryptocurrencies that I've covered. So remember what to do. Hit the subscribe button down below. Bell notification icon obviously helps the channel out a lot. We're going to 150,000 subscribers, so be sure to do that. Uh, like the video up if you find some value from it. Let's dive in. The notes from the previous video are all through here. I went into them in detail, but I'll just mention a few of them quickly. I do not own all of these projects. I advise you to do your own research on certain projects if you consider buying them because I don't own all of them. I just follow the charts and not the fundamentals. I look at them for trades. Sometimes they're working out, sometimes they're not ready for a trade. Risky, risky doesn't mean that I think not to buy. It's just that I expect high volatility in those cryptocurrencies. Generally speaking, my outlook is longer than a few hours or a few minutes. I'm looking for a few days, weeks, maybe even months, depending on the position and the pattern of the market. Ethereum's crushed it. It's basically crushed a lot of things in the last month. So overall, we could have just sold our entire portfolio and put it into ETH. Often opportunities require work to find them. Bull market crowds expect it to be easy. Weak positions, I may drop uh, to conserve time and energy. So I'm not going to mention or update if I'm buying or selling any of these. These are just a look at the overall, uh, the overall uh, cryptos that we've been following on the channel just to give a clean slate update. Uh, I keep, keep an eye on the alerts that I have on the side of the chart here. Altcoins will depend on the B on BTC as well. If we happen to find BTC rolling over, which I don't think it will at this point, but if it does, then we could expect uh, heavy declines in US dollar value of our altcoins. Accumulation, consolidation, same thing, if I'm calling it either or, and this is gonna be quick fire. So these are the next 10 that we're gonna look at, and previous video, this is what we looked at. The shitcoin perps, the total market caps, and these 10. So go back and check that video out. These are the next 10, but before we get into BNB, let's just have a recap of Bitcoin at this stage because it is getting close to the level that I am hoping for as a bullish sign, uh, bullish momentum sign. So this is the chart here. It's something that I put out about maybe two weeks ago now. The level is around 60,500 because it's the top of this bar on the 18th, which was the scary day. This was the big crash day. And the first signs of weakness is uh, uh, breaks below 54,000. And I have this level because we're, we've hit it twice already and we've bounced off it, but on weakening, very much weakening volume as we rise. The only positive to this is we're above the 50% level. So like I said, for a couple of weeks now, we're expecting a bounce out of this low because we've had 11 straight days down. That's normal to expect a solid bounce. This has been a weak volume rally, this, this is the next attempt, and we expected a little bit of a dip potentially another dip here unless we can get close enough to break this 60,000 level and we're only about $1,300 away now. So this is just one of those sideways periods for Bitcoin, but it does uh, weigh a lot onto the market. Ethereum at this stage has just broken through $4,000. Basically as an update, we continue to make higher highs and the accumulation zones continue to work out quite well big volume on the days that we see some sort of fall and that keeps getting bought up, which leads me to believe Ethereum is going to keep performing really, really strongly. This was the day that I was convinced Ethereum is going straight up. We had huge volume, big day down, away we go. We just saw another massive volume on the only reversal that we've seen since this low. So this is the major reversal, massive volume. I think we're going a lot higher because of that bar. Doesn't mean that 
I am going to load up on leverage positions. It's just the way I'm reading the market. Now, back to the next 10, and the aim here is to get through 40 of these in quick fire. Binance, risky, reaccumulation. So let's get back to our Bs. Binance, US dollar is way up here. Volume starting to lighten up as we break through, but it doesn't mean that it's over. It's just the trend is up, but it's getting riskier because of the distance we've come from our lows. Cake, again, similar sort of thing. Uh, risky because we're at these massive highs, but it could be a reaccumulation zone. You can just see the volume is starting to dry up a little bit, but that's okay in these zones. Ideally, we want to keep seeing some swings above the highs, but uh, cake is just a bit up there for the risk, especially with how far it has to move to, to get some gains. Uh, CRO, weak, but it's a long-term outlook for my position. It's one of my bigger positions, and at the moment, it's looking a little weak because we're just not getting those breakthroughs, the highs, break of the highs, and we just keep getting a little bit lower on the highs. So that's why I'm seeing it as weaker than I would like, but we're above 50% for now. Doge, risky. It's been in the news so many times. Very risky at these levels, and the returns just aren't there for me. Other people can play it. Go for gold. It's had a nice bounce off the 50%. If we can get a break of the high, sure, maybe it goes to a dollar, but it's just the returns just aren't there for my strategy. Dot looks okay. It's just having a bit of a struggle against ETH. Against the other players, it's looking good. Bitcoin value, it's holding values at these levels. Dot ETH, not so good. Ethereum has just crushed everything. Dot USD, it's still just holding its values uh, between that $30 and $40 zone. Now I'm going to go through a little bit quicker. Engine, weak. I'm going to wait for some signals. So this is looking weak to me. Lower lows, there's a high, there's the next low, and this low just has not been a good bounce. ETC is Ethereum Classic, and I think this is just a bit of a runoff from everything else that's going on in the market. It is winding up at this position, so you want to see a hold above 90 bucks, which is a 50%, to then get another move higher. But it's not something I'm trading because I think the volatility is going to be crazy. ETH, we've just looked at that, nailed that amazingly well. Filecoin is looking okay. This is on my watch list. I'm not convinced that we are ready for a move up. If we happen to get a breakdown, then I like it as a better uh, position to enter a trade long term for Filecoin. FTT, it's been very, very strong this year. It continues up and it's just range bound on the way up. Hits the lows, keeps going. Hits the lows, keeps going. So FTT is on my list as well. I have not got a position that I would absolutely love, but I'm in the, the ecosystem with Solana. Leads me up to the next 10. Okay, let's start with Geo. Geo is a very small cap. It's something that I've talked about on the channel. It's been absolutely crushed, but it keeps breaking through these swings. And like I've said many times before, if we get broken swings, it's not something to stay in. This is the way I play it. I don't want to stay in these things super long like this. I do still hold Geo. I'm not getting rid of everything, but I do still hold it. And I'll continue to watch this as it continues to flatten out. It's just not getting as steep anymore. Still weak though. GRT, weak, but it's coming back to enter a reaccumulation zone. This is my zone in here between that uh, 90 cents and about the dollar 50. So it's still looking a bit weak, not ready yet, but long term I like the project. Hot is a dollar, uh, one cent and four, 1.4. Looking a little bit weak. There are the alerts. Let's see if we can get a break above. If we break below, then it's pretty much off, but I, I don't think it's gonna be that bad just yet. We've got to keep watching this. Uh, injective protocol, $19. It's above the highs. So it had a breakout above the highs. It's looking strong. It could just be a, a reaccumulation above the highs. So temporary pause is what I've got here. Is what I'm looking at uh, while it finds its feet again. Carver, potentially attempting some accumulation. It continues to move higher and then dump and then move higher and dump. So we're getting higher highs, but this is looking like a lower high. So potentially it's going to pause for a bit longer on the BTC value. It's not what I exactly want to see, but we're seeing high lows, which is good. The highs are just not getting up there as much. So it might start to flatten out a little bit before it can break this level, which is the 14,000 Satoshi. Next, Kasama. Kasama looks okay. It's getting a, it had a nice bounce off 50%. Looks good. Labs, weak. Haven't talked about it that much on the channel, but people have asked for it and it's just been very, very weak. It looks very much like a lot of these small caps where they get absolutely crushed and then eventually they just come out of nowhere and do thousands of a percent. So don't take your eyes off these things if they're on your uh, on your watch list and they're stuff that you want to get involved, involved with. Keep them on your watch list uh, because eventually, look, they're down a lot 
you know, that's a lot, 90% down from that peak, but this is the way you find projects. So just keep them there. I'm going to keep another little alert if we keep breaking down. And then if we break above these levels of those highs, good sign so far, but they can change. Link, nailed it. We've done extremely well. 50 bucks. It's just been creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. It's been wrecked against Ethereum. Actually, not too bad. We saw a little double bottom and it just has not recovered from that double bottom because Ethereum is so strong. It has been very well against Bitcoin and just broke out again recently over the last week. Uh, so nailed Link, I'd love to say. I have nailed this very, very well. We got it through these lows that was looking like uh, a bottom, broke above, came back, nailed it again, broke above. It's been doing very well. So Link is good. Lit and Tree, not so good. It's just sort of sitting sideways above this 50%, but it's kind of weak. Maybe it's just finding a level in this $8 region, but the lows are important to keep track of. The thing that it's not doing too well against is Bitcoin value, and it's just finding lower lows and lower highs. So that's weak against Bitcoin. LTC has been okay lately, but overall not the best, even though it's now getting very close to all-time highs of $420. Against Ethereum, it was absolutely crushed. I was looking for a hold above this level. That was the golden area to, to accumulate. It got crushed against Ethereum, so I sold out and put it into ETH. Uh, BTC, it's done well against Bitcoin value, but Ethereum's done even better against Bitcoin value. All right, next 10. Next 10, we're doing very well. Matic, good, risky, temporary pause. It's at 95 cents. It has pushed to, it made it to the dollar yesterday, a dollar and five and just broken under recently. These moves are looking a little bit less as they move up, but I think long-term Matic is a pretty good project from what I've heard. I'm not getting into the fundamentals, just the technicals. It could be another accumulation as we continue to break into new regions, just like we saw recently as it was accumulating again and then broke higher. But we definitely want to see a bit bigger of a push through. Otherwise, this push is getting smaller than this push, and that just means momentum is slowing. OMG, good temporary pause. This is the US dollar pair. Yeah, it spiked, which I didn't like the look of for Omise Go. This is another layer two on Ethereum, but we're above these highs, so maybe we're just finding some accumulation area. And that's what it's done all the way up. So maybe once Ethereum cools off, we might get some flow over into layer twos, and it's looking like a lot of these are starting to set up. Anything in that smart contract space is setting up okay, but while the spotlight's on Ethereum, you know what? It's probably going to be Ethereum show. Harmony One. It's not so ready in my opinion. I haven't seen a good low that I like. Not to say that it can't just form a base here and break above around uh, 16 cents, 17 cents, but I definitely want to see a bit longer. It's, it's reminding me a little bit more of GRT where it's had a pretty good run. This had a better run, of course, but it just needs some time to reaccumulate. Poker City, crushed, same deal with GODB. The swings were the areas to get out. This was one that I wasn't as happy holding, so I got rid of this one and uh, I'm still waiting on this as well. So I had a small position, I just let it sit there. This is the way I'm looking at it. Like I said in the previous video, if I buy these small caps, which are pretty risky, one to 2% max. So if they drop, they drop, and it's not really affecting my portfolio overall. The majority of my portfolio is in ETH. Having said that, it's a small position, but it's still down 50%, approximately 40, 50% from the time that I was, I was looking at it in this region. It broke that low, so it's not strong at all. It's uh, definitely on the weaker side. Looking for a, a bottom here. P uh, Poker City, something that we traded earlier this year and did extremely well. That went up from like our 40, 50 cents. I think it was around a dollar that we're looking at it, and it went all the way to seven bucks. This is in that sideways trend accumulation, well, probably distribution at this stage until we get to an accumulation. Distribution is just more of a, a sell on the way down until we find a low and then we start to accumulate again. And you can see it looks kind of similar to uh, later stages of Harmony One and similar to ish to uh, the graph, same, same sort of chart. Next is Ramp. I, I like this project and it's looking like we've found maybe a temporary bottom. So this is a different sort of pattern got some strong volume out of this low, and then we saw another high swing low with some more volume on a push above the resistance level. So I like ramp at the moment. This is looking much better. Low in, it's weak against Ethereum. Everything's weak against Ethereum at the moment, but ramp is much better than these other few that we've just looked at. Ray, nailed it. Another one that we nailed very, very well. This is the Bitcoin value. It's been going up. That's not a fantastic chart for it, but Ray against ETH, crushed, but Ray against USD been doing very well. This is what we're looking for here. 
around the breakouts here of about 10, 10, 50, now sitting at around $14. So it's not the biggest gainer, but 30, 40% at the moment as we continue to push higher above these highs, higher highs, fantastic. That's what I want. Ray is, is looking good. Reef, one that we talked about a long time ago and I just didn't like the games that were getting played uh, with different companies, Alameda Research, with these guys. Anyway, the overall is looking pretty solid now. We're just trending sideways with um, good support coming in at 30, 35, uh, sorry, three cents to about three and a half cents. So I like Reef at the moment. It's putting in some good signs for now. Ren, okay. Looks like we've gone through some consolidation and we just keep finding these consolidation levels on the way down. They might be sellout areas, so more of a um, distribution as we continue along the way. But now we're starting to see just a little bit of volume come back in. Ren BTC is more where it's at for me. We are, we've come out of this low and now just finding another higher low. It's yet to be confirmed because the volume that's coming in is on the peaks, so that's a bad sign. But it's a lot better now than buying it at these peaks back in August when Ren was absolutely wild in the news. When most people probably weren't in the market, this is the DeFi craze through here. So we're just recovering from the DeFi craze, possibly a low uh, at around that thousand or nine hundred satoshis. Last one in this ten is SNX. So synthetics at eighteen bucks. Similar sort of chart. You can see we're just sort of trending down. These things are starting to position themselves again. Maybe we've got a little bit more time to uh, reaccumulate this extra high volume on this spike up doesn't show sign of strength to me so that's why i'm saying it's uh, sideways at the moment similar to the other charts where it's just looking to find a base you've seen the pattern here a lot of them are trying to find bases at the moment that uh, we've covered and some of them are really taking off some of those majors are taking off let's have a look at the last 12 so sol sold usd it's at those highs. We've covered this on the previous video. Check it out on the channel. Soul Project Fundamentals, I love it. At the moment, it's this reaccumulation zone at higher levels. So the risk is we drop a hell of a long way. And the other side is we break the highs and continue up on the trend. Market cap looks good. That's why I really like Soul and what it's achieving compared to the other smart, smart contract platforms. Something that I absolutely love. SRM, nailed it. $10. These were the areas around that $7 of the breaks. Next breaks were at $8.60, and now we're sitting at 10. So we've been breaking up to the upside, looks good. It's not too parabolic yet, so that's why I still like the look of SRM, Serum, which is on the Solana ecosystem. SRM ETH, I assume, has been crushed. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's been holding its ground for these last couple of months, especially while Ethereum has been going absolutely crazy. So that's that's a reasonable sign, but I suspect we'll probably break these lows if Ethereum keeps going. Theta. Theta USD, $12. It's uh, come off from its highs. I thought we were going a bit lower, but Theta is showing a lot of strength. Got this low in on the 50% on the $8 level and now finding some higher swing lows with higher highs back into this range above the $11 zone. And I think we'll probably find some consolidation at these levels rather than further down where I thought at around four bucks. Just after this absolute crash, things... Uh, recovered much better than other cryptos. So Theta is looking stronger than others, especially with the break of the recent high. TVK, big one that I love the look of when NFTs come back into the spotlight, but they're just not in the spotlight at the moment. So quiet times mean quiet consolidation when no one else is trying to run the price up and you get left out. Uh, it's looking okay from this low. I suspect we'll probably come back down after seeing these peaks on high volume. So I think that's a lot of selling coming into it. Um, so yeah, I'm. I'm expecting lower prices, but longer term, still okay. This is the level here that is a uh, high alert for me around that 30 cents, because if that low breaks, then we're obviously heading down a lot further. Uni, okay, slow climb. One point on TVK, these are the smaller caps, remember. These are the small caps. Remember what we do with the small caps. These are not like investing into Link or ETH or anything like that in, in my portfolio. Uni. $40. It's trending above these highs, especially with the news of uh, the layer three that has just come out or version three, I should say. And it's it's holding above these highs. It's not looking overly weak, but it's not looking overly strong. So that's why I've just got it here as a slow climb, temporary pause. Let's see what happens next. That's all I can really add to this one here, especially as the volume just drops off as we, as we drop. That's okay. I'm going to put a little alert at around $46 if we can get there from this point. So I'm, I'm still okay holding uh, uni at this point. VET, it is at 23 cents. 
This is looking a little more like theta. Massive dive into the 50%, fantastic zone, big volume, and it's making its way up again. So I think the VET crowd, you guys know who you are, love it, and the, the crowd's gonna go crazy once this gets closer to this all-time high. Just keep an eye on the volume for VET in case the volume dies off as it gets higher or you get some sort of spike out and you've got a lot of selling, a lot of the smart money selling onto the dumb money. XLM is my, I've got it bold because it's my favorite out of the entire 52 that I've looked at so far. This is the market cap at around 15 billion. XLM BTC has been consolidating forever for about a year and a half now, a little longer than a year and a half. We get a break above 12 or 1300 Satoshis, we can possibly finally uh, start to enjoy the party. But XLM has done nothing for this entire time against Bitcoin Valley. It's just been sideways consolidation. If this breaks out, it should do very well, especially after such a long consolidation. I've said that three times. Uh, XLM ETH, not the best chart. It better have been in ETH the entire time. So that's the downside to it. The US dollar chart is getting closer to all time highs. So the all-time high is sitting at around 90 or so cents, currently at 66. If we get a nice break, then I think we'll probably test this level. This is closer to its all-time high than XRP is. So the main thing I love about XLM is the BTC uh, chart. This looks like consolidation, especially as we get higher lows. Low, high low, next high low, and hopefully we get the break above that. That just, it was such a long time, it looks good. All right, the last uh, five, XMR. XMR is, BTC looks good. You can see it had a massive, massive bear market. This was the dump when it was getting delisted from exchanges for being a privacy coin when governments went crazy. We have broken above that level. That is a very important point. So I suspect from here, XMR is probably, the, the probabilities are not going to, the probabilities, what I'm saying is the probabilities are not going to be that we're going to see these lower levels again. I finally got it out. Point is, we broke above the uh, the emotional area where it absolutely dumped after that massive news. We're above it now. I expect this to do very, very well against BTC value. USD value, all-time highs. We've just broken through all-time highs or at least touched them. So XMR is looking pretty good. XRP, USD, dollar sixty. another potential setup, which I just put in a previous video looking at where would the Dogecoin profits go. And we know XRP is big amongst retail investors. VET is big amongst retail investors. So it can go across to some of these projects. Uh, and I suspect some of it should come to XRP uh, once we get this next push above that dollar seventy, dollar eighty level, and it gets closer to the $2, people are gonna get interested again. Just keep an eye on the volume as well as every time it's peaked, it's had big volume. So that's almost like the selling is coming in every time it's trying to push higher. BTC pairing though is looking good. It's just had a recent touch of new fresh highs. Last couple, YFI. YFI USD is at all time highs or has recently touched all time highs. YFI BTC looks great. So this is a pretty good little level down here. It's at near all time lows, at least on the Binance chart. I know it has been lower and it is looking to press above that one Bitcoin level, the value of one Bitcoin. So this is similar to the XLM chart where we're ha we've had a long accumulation and XLM is obviously a lot longer, but I like YFI for this reason. So that would probably be my second choice out of these, especially as it's a lot younger of a cryptocurrency and doesn't have all of the baggage like XLM does. Now to the last couple, Zen and Zill. Zen, I don't talk about often, but it's been a big one on my portfolio, which I mentioned in the last video. I've just seen this massive bar day here where it's just spiked out, huge volume, and then gotten slammed back down. This has had a massive run from like four or so dollars and then six dollars more recently and come all the way to $170. I think those returns are pretty good. I'm very happy with those. So if this thing shoots up again and doubles from this price, so be it. But you know, I'm just holding a smaller bag now, but been selling on the way up because that's the way I play the game of Zen. It just became too much of my portfolio. Zen BTC looks like it might break. We're above our 50% level. So it's wild, absolutely wild, but a little bit at the riskier side because we're at major resistance. What's going to happen? Zill. Zill is just a quiet achiever. It's our last one. It's good. It's still up. We're looking at it around 17, 18 cents back at these levels in March. We're up slam back down and now we're on our way again. 
So I think this is going to perform quite well once Ethereum cools off. The BTC chart, again, it's just a quiet achiever. No, not many people are talking about it and it just keeps going up. Slow gains, but it's up. Better than anything in the fiat space. It's still proving itself against Bitcoin. Sure, Ethereum's probably crushed everything. So that's a look at 42 altcoins. Previous video had 10. We also got through the shitcoin index, the total two. My views on the current bull market and we're going to see an alt season. Why? Why not? Timeframes. I packed a lot into that video and it's looking like it's around 25 or so minutes. So thank you very much for your uh, time watching the video. Be sure to hit the like button down below if you found some value from it. Now, I don't know when I'll do another update like this, but stay tuned on the channel. Make sure you've hit that bell notification icon and you'll see updates as we follow them through the news and the charts. Stick around on the channel. Plenty more videos coming out. Yes, long term, I am bullish. I do put out videos that talk about bearish signals because that's the way I maintain my healthy skepticism of the market so I don't get absolutely crazed about $100,000 Ethereums or $2,000 links, things like that, right? This is just to keep a level head of the markets. If you want that Hopium stuff, you know where to find it. You found the Hopium free channel. I hope you're enjoying what you're finding here. Plenty of links down below. Uh, check out my Instagram, Twitter, daily Q&As, Check out my portfolio on Instagram, links to Blockfolio and SwiftX to trade and track your portfolios, plenty of other stuff. I'll see you at the next video. It's been a long one. Thank you very much once again. Until next time, have more fun to get more done.